near the city of Kevwan. Najwa Selmi supports her family single-handed by making traditional soft bread called tabuna. It's 40 degrees in the shade and even hotter when Najwa fires up the outdoor oven. This is what she does every day, but only when the basic ingredients can be found. If I do not have semolina, I cannot earn a living and I cannot support my children. Last time there was a shortage for three months, I couldn't cope. My husband can't work, he is sick. I had no choice in order to survive. My kids are growing up and their needs are growing too. You can see how the situation is now, with the prices getting higher. It is becoming hard to live and I find myself not able to take care of them. Nashua's struggle to buy what she needs is happening across the country. Eggs, coffee, vegetable oil and milk. All are in short supply or selling at such high prices that many have to pay on credit. It's a lot to deal with on your own. Believe me, right now we are eating only bread and olive oil. We are not able to afford any vegetables from the market or anything else. In the capital Tunis, few outward signs that the country is in the grip of food and fuel shortages linked to the war in Ukraine. With shipping supplies disrupted, basic goods are unavailable or unaffordable, like the soft wheat and barley from Russia and Ukraine that Tunisia depends on. And although for now Tunisia's mills are busy and the silos are still full, there are still supply problems for many. Baker Mohamed Lanoussi knows this all too well. When there's not enough flour, he's had to close and send workers home. It's a big problem. If I order eight tons, they only give me one. They say, you need to wait. And then when I tell them that I might close, they say, OK, close. The prices are going up. Poor people can no longer afford anything. It's like the world is on fire. It's early morning in Kebwan. Najwa is hard at work, preparing dough for a small batch of flatbread, just as her mother taught her. Even this is at risk now. The longer the Ukraine war and the threat of global economic recession drag on. It's not just the flour, there is no oil and there is no firewood, which is essential for me. I have to go really far to look for it and sometimes I find it, sometimes I don't. Najwa also faces hard choices for her eldest daughter, Mariam, who wants to go to university. She shouldn't have to think that she is inferior to the other students. But she doesn't have clothes like them, nor live like them. She doesn't even have the essentials like a phone. Have a look at my daughters. What can I do? And her problems are only just starting for her youngest daughter. I couldn't afford to buy her books, nor a bag, nor her school stationery, not even clothes. Najwa is desperate for her daughters to have a better life. I pray to God for them to be successful. My only wish for them is that their needs will be met, especially the essentials. I'm not asking for luxury. To help them, Najwa plans to have her small grocery. I wish I could build up my store to sell different items like spices or detergents, which could help me in case we can no longer find semolina. This way, I'd have an alternative to feed my family, so we're not waiting or asking for help from others to survive. As Najwa struggles on, defiant young Tunisians are taking huge risks to leave their country in search of a better future. But trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea is often deadly. Despite the danger, Najwa's eldest son recently reached Italy. She knows for now he is safe, but little else. Which means that today, as ever, 
the family's well-being remains entirely in Najwa's hands.